Hey, welcome back. All SaaS applications need a couple of different things when it comes to users and user onboarding. One is authentication. That is knowing the user is who they say they are. And the second is authorization, meaning they are authorized to see what they are trying to see. And in our case, when we're talking about a SaaS application, oftentimes that authentic or the authorization is based on what they're paying for or the level that they've paid for, sort of the tier of the subscription. And so in this episode, we're gonna talk about how we onboard customers using a Rails application. We're gonna use the devise gem for authentication. And then we'll talk about how you might set up a customer inside of Stripe that is related to your object inside of the database that is the, the Rails user in the devise, um, in the devise context. All right, so we're gonna get started by adding the device gem. So we're going to say bundle add device. And this device gem is a well known gem in the Rails ecosystem for handling authentication. Next, we're going to say Rails G device colon install. This will install device. And this comes out with a bunch of different instructions for us to follow for setting up um, some errors in our application HTML. So we'll open up our application HTML ERB and drop in this to our template just so that we can see those alerts and notices. And it also asks us to generate some device views. So here we can say Rails G device colon views. That will fire up our views. And finally, it wants to make sure that we have a uh, device associated with a specific user model. We haven't actually created a user model yet. So first we'll say Rails G model user, and that will create just an empty user model. Um, so that has this, this file here for users.rb. And next what we're gonna say is Rails G device user. And when we run this command, it's going to generate a migration for us that we can open up. And you'll notice that there are a bunch of different concerns that device will enable. And those concerns depend on database fields. So we're gonna, we can uncomment sections of this if we'd like. So here we'll turn on the trackability of users. And this will just let us know when they have logged in or out. So we're gonna add trackable here to the user model that was created for us. When we run Rails DB migrate, this will create the two tables that we just talked about. So that created the users table and it added device to the users table. Now we can restart our development environment with bin dev, head back over to our browser and go to localhost 3000 slash users slash sign up. And this will show us the device view for signing up as a new user. It's not very stylish, but you can go back and style this to your heart's content. So if we uh, log in or create a new account with Jenny Rosen and the password is just password and click sign up. We're gonna get this error that says undefined method user URL for device registrations. Now this will happen if we have not gone into the device RB initializer and set a couple different configs. So the first is that we want to, inside of the navigational format, what we wanna do is add turbo stream here, which is going to be a new default that's part of Rails 7. We can also add, we wanna be able to sign out via get requests, just so that we don't have to add any buttons to the page that will just add a little bit of overhead and during the demo, we'll be able to sign out uh, via a get request here. Since we changed the initializer, we need to restart our development environment head back over to the browser, go back to users sign up, and let's log in as test at example.com, or we're gonna sign up as this. And now when we log in, we are brought back to the root route. Now, one thing we wanna do is have some page that is actually protected. So we should not be able to see a certain page if we're not authenticated and we're not logged in. So to do so, we'll generate a new controller. So Rails G controller um, dashboards, and this will have just a show page. So if we go over to our routes file, we'll add a new route for that. So we're gonna say resource dashboard. And in our dashboards controller, we can say, we can add a before action that says, if you're not authenticated, it'll redirect you to the sign-in flow. So we're gonna say before action, authenticate user bang. So now if we attempt to view the dashboards page, we can see it because we're actually signed in or we're signed up. But if we, uh, if we were signed out, so users 
slash sign out and we try to go back to the dashboard page, we are gonna be redirected back through the sign in flow. So then we would have to log in with test at example.com, password, log in, and now we can successfully see the dashboard page. All right, so that is going to be our really basic addition of authentication. Now what we wanna do is talk about how we're gonna create that Stripe customer that will enable us to do authorization based on payment. Much like Devise is for authentication, there's another gem or another Rails engine called Pay. Pay abstracts away a lot of the interactions for setting up Stripe webhooks, handling the database tables and, and the database layer for you, and gives you a lot of helpful abstractions for going through the checkout flow and then the customer lifecycle. So today we're gonna to use the Pay gem. So we're gonna jump over to the terminal here and we'll say bundle add pay. This is the, the Ruby gem that we're gonna install and this will come with some migrations that we can generate. Once we've installed the pay gem, we can run pay, uh, Rails pay install migrations. This will generate the migrations for us to create the pay tables. If we want, we can open this up and take a look at the migrations. It's gonna create tables for customer objects, merchants for using Stripe Connect, payment methods, subscriptions, charges, and webhooks. And it keeps track of all of this stuff for you automatically. That's really handy so that you don't have to write all this by hand, but just know that you could technically implement all of the features and functionality using the Stripe Ruby gem directly to make API calls directly to Stripe, but we're gonna use the pay gem to abstract some of that away. So now we have the gem installed, we have generated our migrations. Now we can say Rails DB migrate to make our database reflect those changes. And we can also generate some views. So if we want, we can say, um, Rails G pay views, and this will generate a bunch of views for different mailers or for the Stripe checkout buttons or showing different payments, etc. Now that we have the pay gem installed, let's jump into our user model and make the user a billable user. So we're going to jump over to the user. Now it's worth mentioning that if you want to collect payment at a different level than from the user. So for instance, if you're charging at the team level or at an account level where multiple users are all sharing the same account, you may want to enable this sort of billable thing at a different level. For our use case, we're gonna add pay customer at the user model level. That means that each individual user is going to require payment before they can access certain pages, before they can be authorized to view certain pages. So by default, you can just call pay customer and then you can use all of the pay gem functionality out of the box with a user object. However, in our case, what we wanna do is set the default payment processor. So I'm gonna set the default payment processor to Stripe so that all of our payments run through Stripe. Now let's take a look at what this gives us. So let's jump into the Rails console and take a look. So if we create a brand new user, maybe we're gonna say you is user.create the email of like 123 at example.com and we need to give it a password of, oh gosh, very secret password. Okay, so now that we have a user object, we can say u.paymentprocessor. So that's going to give us back a pay customer object. So this is a model from the database. This is an active record model. It looks like an active record model. It is an active record model and its processor is set to Stripe, but you'll notice that the processor to ID is nil. Now, if you're implementing this entire SaaS product yourself and you're not using pay, you want to store the ID of the Stripe customer object at a minimum in your database alongside your authenticated user. Whether that's just a column in the database that's called Stripe customer ID, or whether that's a separate model called customer or something like this that is associated with your user, you wanna store that ID somewhere. Now, when we're using the pay gem, that's stored in the pay customer object. That is stored as the processor ID. Now, by default, Pay does this really clever thing where it will only create the Stripe customer using the API when a customer is needed, when it's absolutely needed. So until we go and try to create a checkout session or if we attempt to access the customer, there is no ID for the Stripe customer and there is no ID here yet. So if we say u.paymentprocessor.customer, oops, if I can spell customer right, customer, this will fire the API call to create a brand new Stripe customer. And you can see that the response is actually a Stripe customer object directly from the API. And it has this ID 
cuss underscore LNU blah, blah, blah. Now this is a Stripe customer object. You'll notice a couple of things here. Number one, it has the email address set from the user. Um, that's the same email address that we use to create the user with. And there's a couple, there's like a lot of other settings here, like the address that's null, currency, default source, etc. A lot of these things we can set, and we're gonna look at that in just a moment. We can set that by default every time we create a customer with the Stripe API. But now when we go to access payment processor, we're given back a processor object or a pay customer object that has that Stripe customer ID so that we're always interacting with the same Stripe customer object on Stripe. Now, if you, again, if you're implementing this yourself, what I would recommend doing is inside of the user model, one way to, to achieve the same thing is perhaps you say before validation, ensure Stripe customer. And then you make a method here, ensure Stripe customer. And then you make your API call Stripe customer.create and you pass along the email, which is like self.email. And then you wanna store this off into a variable and ultimately update. So like self.update the Stripe customer ID to be this new customer ID. So if you were implementing this yourself and you were not using the pay gem, this is how I would recommend uh, going about it. Um, because we're using the pay gem under the hood, we don't actually have to, to implement it this way. So at the end, after we have, um, after we have created the user model, because we're using the pay gem, we can immediately check out. So there's another thing that we want, that I want to look at on the user model that we can now access. So let's say user.last. So we have this user object and it has a pay, uh, um, it has a payment processor and we can ask if we are subscribed. This will look to see if there's any subscriptions that are uh, trialing or active. Now by default, we don't have any subscriptions created for us. Those subscription objects will be created using Stripe webhooks which we're gonna look at in another episode. But this is a method that we can use to tell whether or not a, the current user is subscribed. So let's go add some logic into our application that will prevent anyone from seeing the dashboard view if they are not subscribed. So we can jump into the application controller. We're gonna add a method that we can then use as a before filter to sort of paywall the user or require that they have subscribed. So here we're gonna say, ensure subscribed, and I'm gonna add an exclamation point to indicate that this is going to be an action that is going to like forcefully redirect them somewhere if they're not subscribed. Then we can say current user dot payment processor dot subscribed. And if they're not subscribed, then we can say redirect to slash pricing perhaps. Now, on the, now we can use this ensure subscribed method as a before filter. So if we go back to our dashboards controller here, in addition to authenticating the user, we can ensure that they're subscribed. First, we need to restart our development environment. Then we can go back to our dashboard page, refresh the page, and we are redirected to slash pricing. We don't have a pricing page set up, so that'll be in the next episode. We're gonna talk all about building out a pricing page, but at this point we are preventing someone who does not have a subscription from accessing our sort of paid content. So now we have authentication set up, we have authorization set up, and we have a user onboarding flow that is sort of getting closer. In the next episode, we're gonna talk all about building out this pricing table and pricing page and a few different approaches to that. There's a couple other things I wanted to go over though during onboarding. So if we go back over to our user model here, so far we have set the default payment processor to Stripe. If there are other arguments that we wanna pass when we're creating that customer object, we can do that here inside of the user model. Another argument we wanna to pass to pay customer here is Stripe attributes. We're gonna pass it the name of a method inside of the model. And this should return a hash. So we're gonna just create some attributes here, and that's what we'll return. Now, these might be any arguments that you would otherwise pass to the Stripe API to create a customer object. So for instance, we could say description, and this might be like created with pay, or we could pass some metadata. And one really common approach is to use an argument that is passed into Stripe attributes called the pay customer. 
and set the metadata so that in Stripe, we know the ID of the pay customer. We also know the ID of the user. So we can say pay customer ID is pay customer ID. We can also say user ID is ID. That will set up some metadata on the, on the customer so that inside Stripe, we can sort of associate back and forth very easily. So let's go through the onboarding flow once again here. So let's go sign out. So we're gonna go to users, sign out. And then we're gonna sign up as test metadata at example.com. All right, so we just created a brand new user. Now let's open up the Rails console. Also, we can attempt to access dashboard here. And again, we're gonna be like forced to that pricing page. So if we say u.paymentprocessor.customer, that will sort of cause the lazily loaded customer object to be created. And here we can now see that inside of the metadata, we have the pay customer ID is set to five and the user ID is set to five. So those are gonna be the IDs of those objects in the database. We also have our description set to created with pay. So that's one way that we can add some data to a customer. Great. There's one other thing that I wanted to talk about and that this is a, a bit advanced, but this can help a ton when you're in development and you're testing. And that is using a feature of the API called test clocks. So inside of Stripe, there is a way to sort of simulate changes through time, and that is using test clocks. And so one thing that I like to do is during the onboarding process, when I'm creating the Stripe customer for the first time, I want to create a test clock and associate that new customer with a test clock. That'll allow me to sort of control through time and simulate any events that would fire down the road. So imagine for a second that you wanted to like test out which emails are sent to the customer in a month from now when they're renewing their plan or which emails are gonna happen in a month from now when their payment fails. You can do that using a test clock. And so here what I'm gonna say is if rails.env.development, we only wanna do this in development because test clocks are not available in, um, in live mode. So if we're in development, I wanna create a new clock and it works like this. We're gonna say Stripe test helpers test clock dot create frozen time is time dot now dot two I. And then we're gonna set inside of our adders, we're gonna set our test clock equal to clock dot ID. All right, let's take this for a spin in the Rails console. So we're gonna open up Rails console and we're gonna say you is another user another user that we're gonna create. So we're gonna say, give us a new user called um, test plus clocks. And that created a new user. Now we can say u.paymentprocessor.customer. And again, that will create a customer object for us. We can grab the ID of that customer and we can jump into the Stripe dashboard here and look for that customer. And now we can see that this customer is attached to a clock that is in a simulation. If we wanted to, we can advance time and move this customer. Maybe we can we can see what it is like to uh, look at the customer object in you know 20 days from now or something. Click advance. That'll fire all of the different webhook events that are happening related to that customer. So this is sort of like a pro tip and a way that you can really supercharge your customer objects in development mode is by automatically attaching test clocks to them when they first register. So again, we're using the pay gem and that's offloading a lot of the hard work for us by using Stripe as the default payment processor and then setting these attributes when the Stripe customer is lazily created. Now, again, by default, what we would recommend is either using this pay gem if you're using Rails and if you're gonna implement it yourself, then as soon as the customer signs up for your service, ensure that there is a Stripe customer object associated with that user so that from then on, you can attach every single subscription payment method, charge, all related back to that same user with that Stripe customer object. It helps you sort of collect and organize all of the life cycle of a given user or a given team or given organization all around a Stripe customer. And that's how we onboard Stripe customers. That wraps up our customer onboarding episode. In the next episode, we're gonna talk all about that pricing page. So we finally have redirected to a pricing page, but we haven't built it out at all. So we're gonna go into detail about how to build and wire up an effective 
and really solid pricing page that allows you to do some testing. So we'll see you in the next one.